Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Flow Show. Another packed episode for you. Lots of stuff going on. Good morning to my colleagues, uh, Stel and K Man. Hello. Morning, morning. You. Good, good stuff. Uh, morning to you, lads. Um, oh, sorry to hear your uh, loss, Alexandra. Yes. Um, Condolences, yeah. man. Yeah, right. nice to see you here, but uh, deepest sympathies to you and your family, my friend. Um, I'm sure it's been tough trading the last thing on your mind. Um, keep your chin up, hey, mate. Life goes on, doesn't it? Um, but sorry for your loss anyway. Um, well, yes, good morning, guys. Uh, how are you guys doing? All right. Steve? Uh, okay. Steve's here as well, is he, maybe? Yeah, good man. He's just, uh, he's just recording. Tinkering in the background. He's, he's, still, uh, he's still pretty sick. Oh, oh dear. Yeah. Best wishes to you, Steve, if you're listening. Yeah, I hope you're getting better soon. Oh, what a show, what a, what a start. <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Right, come on, let's back right, up. Right, let's call, let's call it the day. See you tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Right, let's on go. with the show we go. Right, um, let's start with Japan. Some fantastic news for the Bank of Japan. Um, apparently, they now own more than 100 percent of, of their own debt. Um, this was a story that's uh, come out uh, via Bloomberg that, due to uh, well, due to the way they're they're doing stuff over there, the Bank of Japan actually owns more debt than is actually been issued. Um, now, how is that possible? You may ask. Well, obviously, the Bank of Japan are buying uh, lots of debt. They also lend that debt out um, as part of their operations. <laughs> and then, funnily enough, they actually buy some of that debt back from the people they've lent it to. Um, gives you just an idea of how bonkers the situation is getting over there. So it's really a, an a, accounting uh, measure where they actually got on their books officially more than what uh, they've actually bought, uh, more debt than there actually is. Um, but as I say, it just highlights the crazy situation they're in in Japan. And uh, at the moment, there's no signs of that stopping. Um, what do you make of that, guys? It's it's crazy, isn't it? Uh, well, the, the question is, um, if they're lending it out and then buying it again, surely they're lending it out at a worse rate than they're buying it afterwards, right? Otherwise, the, uh, the person who has borrowed it from them wouldn't give it back. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of it, but... All this um, creative financial engineering that central banks are doing just to keep things in check just scares the crap out of me, seriously. I mean, the way central banks have been pretty much dictating price for many, many asset classes <clears throat> uh, scares me. And I think at some point there's going to be proper price discovery. And that's where the poop hits the fan. You, you know what it's like, Stel? It's like... If you wanted to buy a car off me, okay, I'm selling you a car, but you yeah. borrow the money off me to buy the car with. <laughs> so I've, I've yeah. not got the car and I'm down the money and the money I've got is my money anyway. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> bonkers. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. bonkers. Okay, what do you make of it? Uh, it's Bloomberg rehashing something that's been going on for a week uh, just to... to clarify this, uh, this this already they, for for one of the bonds there they own like about 115 percent of it or so um now it's just um, mmt mate and uh, monetizing uh, the debt and keeping things in control and uh, yeah what more uh, what more do you need um and and it's it's unless the new bank of japan governor um is is changing stuff it's um it's it's going to continue, perhaps not at the same rate, but um, Japan, uh, we've been saying it over the years, they are, they, they trap themselves and uh, and they are now firmly trapped. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think it's just uh, not, well, I mean, as I say, it could uh, diminish a little bit, but then they are going to put the government's finances in uh, in jeopardy. And uh, so what, what can they really do unless... Um, Saying like, uh, okay, I mean, we 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 stop everything and <laughs> and uh, sort yourself out, including yeah. your own government, and uh, and the, the markets uh, just uh, implode in uh, in Japan. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I, 
um, yeah, it's 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 good. It's a uh, good clickbait, but it's it's it hasn't really. Um, it's not a big change of what was going on uh, over there. So, um, what do you mean? No, I think it's just the, the the numbers. You know, other banks, other yeah. central banks do the same. They lend out their you know their collateral, their holdings, except the other central banks don't own over half their own government bond market. So yeah, uh, they, that's where the, the difference is. Yeah. They totally strangled their own uh, their own bond market. Um, we, we can we can argue and discuss about whether it's correct, whether it's bonkers, whether it's uh, uh, something that should not be done. And I, I I wouldn't say that other central banks um, um, take uh, um, a leaf out of the Bank of Japan's book, but. Uh, in into some into certain degree over the pandemic, we have seen other central banks do uh, uh, approximately similar uh, to a lesser degree. But uh, I think in Japan, it just uh, yeah, it, it's, yeah, yeah, and it's um, it's been going on for for a very long time, and then it's been um, unfortunately for for one, it's been um, massively ramped up. Uh, after the big quake in 2011, and then uh, since then they 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 just went on to the same path and uh, and and aggravated uh, their own situation. So um, yeah, I, I I don't think it's gonna it's gonna change much, but over a hundred percent of some uh, of some bonds is uh, yeah is something uh, never seen uh, historically anywhere else. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of uh, the potential new Bank of Japan governor. Um, of an, another ex-official has popped up saying that the new man or woman is likely to move away from special stimulus. Um, PM Kishida was also out with some other words on the new governor and said we'll appoint the next governor based on the candidate's aptitudes and the decision will be made while watching future economic trends, um, which is maybe a little bit of an interesting comment um, because that would tend to think uh, perhaps that depending on on what the economy is doing it may mean we get a more hawkish candidate in the hot seat um so one to obviously watch over the next month or so if we get something in february uh, at least knowing who is in the line to take over um while we're at the government uh the Latest economic bulletin, uh, Japan cut the overall economic view in January for the first time in 11 months. They see the economy recovering moderately, uh, but some weakness uh, has been seen recently. Um, that's a bit par for the course of what we've seen in the data. Um, even if you take the, the PMIs that we saw um, overnight uh, yesterday, um, you know, a bit of a divergence between manufacturing and services. Um, that's what's happening in, in Japan. There's some data going the right way. There's some data not quite going the right way. Um, the general trend is still edging higher overall, um, but obviously it's not a straight line. There's little bumps and troughs in the road as we go along. Um, another government official um, was citing Kuroda, said that the Bank of Japan will resolutely keep its monetary environment easy. Um, just refreshing some of his remarks. Um, the big data overnight was in inflation and uh, Kiwi and Aussie inflation. Um, there you can see quarterly numbers uh, for New Zealand, um, year on year 7.2%, same as uh, last month, um, but was expected to, to dip a tick. Um, again, quarterly number as well, beating expectations, uh, but not as high as uh, or the prior quarter, I should say. Um, Australia was uh, even bigger surprise. Come here, there we go. Um, so we get the quarterly number and we get a uh, December number there too. Um, the quarterly numbers year on year, 7.8% beating expectations much higher than expected. Um, the quarterly number, 1.9%, again, beating expectations and higher. Um, there was a December Number two for CPI year on year came in at eight point four percent versus seven point seven percent expected, and a prior of seven point three percent. So that's a monthly reading there. 
So big, big jump in inflation there. No surprise to see the Aussie dollar reacting to that. Um, all fine for me. I got knocked out my uh, little short attempts yesterday. Um, and uh, I was also short a little bit uh, of Aussie yen as well, which uh, got knocked out in that move as well. But good news for my core longs as uh, we ramped up into the 71s. Looking a bit iffy as to whether we're going to hold up there for now and, and keep this break. Um, those fibs there didn't do an awful lot over the data uh, straight the way through. They're not doing an awful lot on the way down at the moment. Um, this last area... 7065-ish uh, might be a bit of a line in the sand for this break point. If we get back under there, we might go back in the box down towards the uh, 70 area and uh, see what happens thereafter. But on the whole, both uh, the Kiwi and Aussie inflation looking a bit stubborn at the moment. Um, what's that done for rate expectations? Um, it's obviously firmed up the RBA expectations for a 25 pip hike. Uh, though perhaps surprisingly, it hasn't shifted the balance between maybe a 25 and a 50. We're still pricing a 25 and leaving rates unchanged. 25 pit pike is currently 76.8% uh, probability. The balance 23.2% for leaving rates unchanged. For the RBNZ, um, there we're pricing a 50 and a 75 here. 87.8% um, probability of a 50 and 12.3% percent for pricing a 75 basis point hike um what do you think guys we've had uh, a little bit of a dip in inflation there now it's uh, jumped higher again um is this something we're going to see elsewhere happening or is this a one-off this is surprising uh did not expect that to be honest uh and it's uh for both uh, the aussie and the kiwi right for new zealand australia so i don't know what to make of it is it a uh you know, is a dip over inflation? I personally don't think so. Definitely not for the U.S. But um, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very surprised. I, again, having said all that, you know, you can never have just a straight line upwards or a straight line downwards. So you, it yeah. could be a bit of a you know correction in some way. But uh, I have to say it's surprising, and also it's surprising because it beats by the margin. You know, it wasn't like oh, 0 0.1 higher. It was it was more. So I'm I'm surprised. I don't know what you guys think, but actually no. New Zealand was 0 0.1 higher year on year, but Australia was more. I don't yeah. know what Kay thinks, but I'm I'm very surprised about that. I mean, you look at the chart. Maybe uh, you know we haven't seen, haven't yet seen the the top for Australia. Yeah, uh, that's true. And you know, if you look, uh, compare this. Uh, well, let's go in a bit. There we go. Oh, let's keep it at that. If, you know, if we look at uh, something like US inflation, it peaked last July, I think, um, and has, has been creeping down since. It seems like we've not given up anything at the moment, uh, and potentially we haven't found a high yet. We know that uh, the RBA has been talking about slowing. Um, maybe this gets them to speed up a bit or at least keep going longer. Well, what do you make of it, Kay? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure whether it's already... Um, some bah, it's, it's early, right, to, to see those uh, Chinese reopening effects in in uh, in Australia. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, same comments as 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 the others were probably a bit surprised, but um, I'm I'm not sure uh, if it's uh, if it's going to last. If it's uh, I'm 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 really not sure. Um, fact of the matter is that uh, Aussie got a serious lift on uh, on the back of it, and um, again, a lot of, a lot of it uh, seems to have to do as well with uh, with Aussie Kiwi, where uh, the divergence is now uh, really back uh, back in play um, in in favour of the Aussie this time. Um, yeah, I think the market as as still was surprised. I think the whole market was surprised, uh, testifying the jump we saw in the in in the in the Aussie dollar. So um, uh, yeah, yeah, I I don't have much more to say about it. Uh, to no, I mean, the, the reaction has been much more subdued in the Kiwi than it has been in the Aussie. Obviously, size is a factor when you measure the two countries together. Um, you know, and that's one thing you have to consider when looking at things like the crosses, it's the same with euro sterling. You know, the eurozone is a much 
bigger entity than the UK. So monetary policy moves there are going to be magnified more so than what happens uh, in the UK. And that that can play into the crosses. Um, but as we said at the start of the year, you know, I'm expecting the crosses to have much more input or, or be much more volatile than, than some of the majors uh, throughout at least the first six months maybe of this year because we're going to get all these central bank divergences playing up. And uh, Aussie Kiwi is uh, is a key one to uh, see that happening in effect. Um, right, moving on, um, SMB's uh, legal said they cannot rule out further rate hikes at present. A bit of a repeat there, and that it's too early to sound the all clear for Swiss inflation. Um, the German government is expecting the economy to grow by 0.2% this year. Um, which falls into the conversation we had on the show yesterday about how, and uh, the, the the three of us all pretty much agree that growth isn't going to be excessively bad or excessively good potentially throughout this year. We're going to be flatlining a bit. Um, I think if economies get one percent growth this year, or don't get minus one percent growth this year, they'll take that as a win. Um, but it's looking like. We're going to be flatlining for the foreseeable future. Um, that's been borne out a bit by the uh, IFO this morning uh, from Germany. A little bit better on some components, a little bit worse on others. Um, you know, no real big trend coming in. The, the main assessment coming in a little bit softer, not as high as expected. But business climate ticking up, um, expectations going a little bit higher. So it's a little bit mixed. We're not seeing anything really taking off uh, as far as some of the numbers coming out uh, of Germany, at least. Um, ECB's Panetta said we should not pre-commit to any specific policy moves beyond February. That was speaking to Handelsblatt. Um, so one of the uh, less hawkish among the ECB members. We must be getting close to hearing from all of them this week, I tell you. Um, also said, can bring inflation down with well-calibrated non-mechanical rate hikes and that it's best to reassess the policy outlook in March based on the new projections. Always looking for new projections, they not. Can't do anything off their own bat. ECB Simcus said, should continue with half-point rate hikes. Um, he's firmly behind Lagarde waving the flag and uh, saying that reaching the peak rate before summer may be unlikely. Um, so more hawkish from that. Fortunately, these bods go into blackout tomorrow, um, so they all shut up. Um, but going on the, the comments we've had so far, the, the dovish members are really pushing their case and the hawks are really pushing their case. And it's all setting up potentially for a lot of uh, differing views at the next ECB um, now. What I think is going to be the main swinger, we, we pretty much know that a 50 is nailed on. What's going to be the real kicker is the level of possible dissension or the level of agreement between the Hawks and the Doves as to the next policy moves. If we're going to start seeing a big fight from the Doves in terms of continuing with these 50 pip hikes, it may put a little bit of pressure on rate expectations on whether those 50s will actually get done that the guard has... Uh, pretty much promised. So for the ECB meeting, when it comes, it won't be the announcement itself per se, in terms of the rate hike, it will be what the discussions were like. And bear in mind, we usually get sources popping out not long after saying that uh, who said what and who was against what. So it all goes into the mix when we're dealing with the ECB to come. Um, Right, two surveys, one from Reuters, one from Bloomberg on the Bank of England. Um, the Reuters poll, um, economists expect the BOE to lift rates 50 pips in Feb to 4% and then finish with a 25 pip hike in March uh, with rates peaking at 4.25%. Um, Bloomberg survey think that uh, rates will get to a maximum 4.5% but that traders are already pricing in a full 25 pip cut by the year end. Um, so not long after rates go up, they're going to be coming back down again. Um, what do you guys make on, on that all over the shop for the Bank of England, really? I think any 
any occasion that Bailey will get to be dovish, he will use it. That's um, <laughs> that's, my, my that's, that's that's the standard. That's, that's been the, standard. the case for over ten years now, right? But the last couple of uh, um, uh, Bank of England chairman. And uh, no, 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 I don't know. I mean, um, what's the other guy again? The Canadian. He, he Carney. Mark Carney. Come on, Mark he was as, as dovish as he could be, right? When they, well, I know there was this Mansion House. Uh, remember this Mansion House interview? I uh, mentioned a speech that he was hawkish, but that was once. Uh, anyway, uh, don't remind me of Carney. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the Bank of England. They're going to be. They, I mean, they're. They, they, we already have the centers, and like you said, it's going to be who pulls the most weight. But uh, for me, having traded the pound uh, for so long, um, it's like it's almost like a. Um, uh, a trend that every time they can, they will be dovish, and I, I don't like that. But uh, you know, that's where my money would be. Let's put it that way. Yeah, definitely, mate. Um, and just a, a quick question there from um, oh, I've lost it now. Where's it gone? Um, from Michael, why is uh, Aussie Kiwi bid today when there's a divergence in rate expectations? Um, Australia to rise 25 and New Zealand to rise 50. Is this a catch up? Um, so there is a obviously a bigger divergence. Current rate in uh, Australia is, where am I? 3.1% in New Zealand is 4.25%. Um, but again, you've got to think of that size factor between Australia and New Zealand. Um, there will be potentially a bigger gap opening up, you're right which on paper should be more um, fundamentally towards the Kiwi over the Aussie. Um, we're not seeing that. And I think it's just two things. Again, it's the size. It's also this data is much bigger. It was, this was a much bigger jump in inflation in Australia than it was in New Zealand. Um, the trend for that inflation is still running higher. The market suggesting that the RBA will maybe have to step up its hike size or at least go for longer. Um, and then that will further close the gap between Australia and New Zealand, potentially. Um, so the bigger shock was to Australia than it was to New Zealand today. And that's what we're seeing in, in the market there at the moment, in my opinion. Um, right, let's look at uh, some of the other bits and bobs. Uh, we had some uh, PPI data, inflationary data from the UK. Um, pretty much following the trend that we're seeing in prices generally. Numbers coming down from last month, um, worse than expectations, as you can see there. So the trend of inflationary pressures from the UK also ebbing, but still running at fairly high levels, as you can see there from the numbers. Um, the US yesterday, we got uh, their manufacturing and uh, some services data via the Philly. The Philly's not uh, usually on uh, much calendars or any calendars, um, but it's out every month. I'm not sure why it's not on a calendar, but there you go. Um, so the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI, a bit of an improvement, but still well in contraction. So a little bit maybe of a dead cat bounce there. Services as well, a little bit of a bounce, but still well in contraction. So maybe we stop the rock who knows, um, but the data still isn't looking all that hot in the US. Um, and as I said, those Philly Fed services came in um, less worse than last month. Um, the headline number minus 6.5 versus minus 12.8 prior. Uh, the key components, wages uh, and benefits were up to 46.1 from 45.2 prior. Um, employment rose as well, 16.5 versus 5.4 prior. Um, so a little bit better there and uh, some higher inflationary input and uh, employment not looking as weak as it was a month ago either. Uh, on top of that, another smaller number, one of the regionals, Richmond Manufacturing, much worse than expected and down on last month too. That's all I've got from uh, the headlines. If uh, I've missed anything, I'm sure the guys will have it. And uh, now's their chance to throw it in. Got anything, guys? No, I think if you've nope. said everything. Got it all. Got it all. Good. I like it when they've got nothing to say. It means I've done it all. Um, right. So 
obviously the big event today probably going to be the Bank of Canada meeting. Um, so I'm going to get the guys' expectations for this. Uh, we spoke about it a bit yesterday. Um, I'm not expecting any fireworks uh, from this one. Um, we know likely what they're going to do. A hike of 25 pips um, to 4.5% is likely. They've been seeing the data pretty much doing the same as everyone else, particularly inflation, just, you know, drawing lower a bit. Jobs market has been fairly solid as well. Um, no massive upsets there. It has been a bit volatile now and again, but uh, nothing really of note. The rest of the economy chugging along. Um, so really, again, it's probably not about the hike itself um, and the size of it, unless it uh, doesn't match what's expected, uh, but more so what the bank view going forward. We know they're in a, a slowdown as far as heights go. They feel they're near the end of their hike cycle. Um, we may get further indications of, are there going to be any more? Or is this uh, the last one and the pause and how long the pause is for? Um, we do get, uh, I think this one's got a monetary policy report with it, hasn't it? I'll have to double check that, but I think there's... Uh, it has, yeah. So we're, we're going to get a presser. It's actually a relatively uh, interesting one because uh, they could signal a pause at least, or um, it's it's. I think it could be an interesting one, um, and and perhaps more interesting on on what they say for what's going to happen than what they actually do today. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, exactly what I just said, actually. <laughs> um, so, what do you think for for the loony here? Um, I'm. I'm going to be watching this low area. Um, that might be a bit of a stretch point if they're mildly hawkish, or at least in, you know indicate that maybe they've got a, a couple more hikes in the pot to go yet. Um, that's going to be one sort of area. Do you, do you guys see anything uh, big moves coming from this one though? And if so, what, you know, what are you looking at? Any uh, levels you're you're picking out? Okay, what do you think? <laughs> I have I'm, I'm on. Uh, I'm. Um... <laughs> Well, yeah, I put, up, I put up a couple of levels uh, in the chat room this morning, and I'm uh, in particular going to scrutinize what happens on the Eurocad, perhaps, and 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 maybe CAD yet if we see uh, big moves, because on the Eurocad we still have that big level uh, up in the 146s, uh, which some of us have been trading uh, off. Um, on the dollar CAD, it's a, it's a bit of a different, a, a difficult call for me uh, to to be fair. I, I, I don't know, but um, yeah, I think it's anywhere 50 to, to 100 points from where we are. There, there's there's uh, interesting zones um, on on the dollar cat, but uh, yeah. I'm having uh, I'm having trouble to see uh, a, a clear direction in the dollar right here and now. Um, and um, yeah, it's probably going going to move in tandem with uh, with other with other stuff, but. Um, I'm, I'm rather looking at the cross side than the uh, dollar cat side personally. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on the on dollar cat. I think um, I think up towards that 135 on the top side uh, might look a bit interesting. Um, it's been a fairly decent level up towards there, and it's you know from where we are now, 130 pips away, 120 pips away. That's that's well within reach. Uh, same as that downside level. So at least two decent levels to look at. Um, if we do get uh, a decent move either side, those will likely be my stretch points. If there's nothing massive in the news or whatever they say to suggest that we're going to see rates moving uh, more significantly um, or stopping and even going the other way. So factor that in when you're looking at it. If you've got any ideas uh, on CAD yourself, uh, guys and girls in the, in the chat room there, please let us know in the comments. Uh, happy to discuss it. I would say that I think oil is a bit detached. Uh, sorry, CAD is a bit detached from oil at the moment. Um, oil's just coming back off uh, its little run higher um, that we've seen, and we're not seeing the loony go the opposite way, um, i.e., CAD weaken on that. Um, so for now, I think, uh, particularly over the BOC, if you do look at oil for its relationship to, to the loony, then maybe we're off that bus. Uh, for the moment. Um, right, let's have a little look around at what's going on. Um, obviously, Aussie dollar, as mentioned previously, um, 
the inflation kicking it up, which is very nice. Thank you very much for my core long position. Um, we've got a couple of zones coming up in the 71s that uh, uh, could be the next areas where we run into a bit of trouble. Um, we've got one sort of 30, 40, 71, 30, 40, uh, which was the, the prior highs we saw back in August. Um, that was after we had a decisive break through uh, the sort of 72 area. Up towards that 72 area, there's another zone, 71, 66 to 80, um, coming in just before the 72s. That's another area I'm looking at. That's one I'm potentially eyeing for a cut of my longs. Um, I'd like to get it up to uh, 71.99 just to knock off uh, 1,000 pips on my lowest entry, which was down here at 61.99. So I don't want to be a dick for a tick and it get up to 80s and uh, I don't bother taking it, trying to be greedy for an extra 10 pips. So that's the zone I'm, I'm potentially going to be looking at to take some off. But I will be monitoring this zone to see how we do here. Uh, but for now, the trend remains my friend at least. If we do get a, a big break up, the next area is going to be up into the high 72s, 73s, um, and a lot of action seen around that zone there. So that's going to be a real potential big one because uh, we had several goes at trying to break it. The breaks gave some decent pips. Then it became resistance. Then we messed around. Then we had another break, and as you can see, the final break led to all the way down there. So it's going to be a big area. Um, so if you are riding longs uh, and you get the break up, that's one you're going to be looking at. Above there, you know, maybe the sky's the limit and we're heading back up to the 75s, but we'll take one step at a time. I'm looking forward to this one, folks. Um, Euro sterling, having a little bit of a nudge higher. Again, I can't really read much into this. Um, you know, when we, we're creeping back up towards these highs, but not looking like we're we're racing up there. This is the area up uh, to the 89s that we've been waiting to break. Um, it's been a bit like uh, Euro dollar around the, this 108 zone, 109 zone. We get up there. We've had a couple of goes at trying to break it. We can't break it. We're not dipping too far back from it. Um so this whole area up here is still in question. Um, and you'll take a bit of a longer view at that. To look at the daily. Um, you can see we are still in a pretty tight range, you know, two, 300 pips between sort of 88s, 86s, maybe down to 85s. Um, been doing that for several months now. So we need to, we need something to kick us into gear. Um, if we have another look up here and it holds, then maybe we're going to get a, a steeper pullback maybe even through the 87 and a bit lower. Obviously, central banks coming up, both the Bank of England and ECB um, could be a, a bit of a mover for this one, but we're going to be watching the levels. And if we get through both meetings and we haven't broken significantly, either up or down, um, then I think uh, range play is the way to look at this one um, and just play the edges. Try not to get caught around in the middle. Um, guys, you got anything uh, you want to, Chuck into this one. I've not really got a lot to add to uh, any of the other pairs who, that are not doing much at all, um, like Dolly Yen. So I'll throw it over to you for your thoughts. Well, for me on the um, on the Euro Pound, uh, it's still pretty clear. It, um, those highs are really the um, the breakout level, eighty nine. What is it? And then if we break that, I think it's ninety very very quickly. And that's yeah. the level where I'm um, I'm going to be looking to reconsider. I've, I've, I've had the bullish bias. I took out my longs a, couple, well, a week ago or 10 days ago, roughly at these levels. Uh, it, it was a, lo a, a good run. I was a little bit scared by those headlines that said that there might finally be closure on Brexit and Northern <laughs> Ireland and all that. So I said, you know, this could easily go a couple hundred uh, pips below. Uh, you know how markets move. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I got sucked in. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I didn't. We're still here, so. But well, um, you made the, made the right move at the time because that's when it pulled back after that. So yeah, yeah, should have should have bought it back at the fifty DMA, but uh, I chickened out. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think uh, Euro pound is stuck at the moment, same as the Euro dollar is still trying to break above one hundred eight seven, uh, and break and hold. It's it's broken twice and come back. So 
as I said yesterday, we're kind of in no man's land still in limbo, waiting for the Fed on um, on the first next week, basically. And uh, I must admit, again, these inflation numbers in um, Australia and, and New Zealand kind of uh, surprised me because I th- I really think that um, U.S. inflation is going to surprise to the downside and surprise, uh, I think it's going to surprise uh, in a big way. And I know I sound crazy when I say that, but uh, remember, they've changed the calculation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so... Uh, just, just my my feeling that we are on on the U.S. side. Uh, we have a little bit of uh, more surprise to come, and but potentially more pain to come uh, for dollar longs. I mean, um, yeah. but yeah. Otherwise, the other pairs, I don't see anything really breaking out or uh, doing anything magnificent. So I'll pass it over to Kay, see if he has anything. Yeah, no worries. And just just before I do that. Um, just on this euro sterling, if we do get a break above 90, I'm going to be looking at these these high levels up to 92s, 93s for for turning around uh, any longs into into shorts, um, depending on what's going on with the Bank of England ECB, uh, of course. But this has been a very good range to trade up between the these 90s and down into the low 80s, um, you know, for the last seven, eight years, it's stayed in that nice range. Um, so it's a good range of playing if you've got the patience uh, to trade it. Um, as you may have known from earlier the, last year, I was longs into here until the summer. Um, from down below, got out 86.30s, I think, over the summer. Got back in 86.24. I'm happy to sit on those and maybe build a bit more. But if we get up uh, to these 92s, 93s, I'm going to be looking potentially to scale in some long-term shorts, uh, as long as it doesn't cost me too much. Uh, Kay? Do you want to grab it, mate? Hey, hey. Um, yeah. Okay, let's just uh, run through a couple of things uh, quickly because I don't, I don't have really much to add to what we are seeing today. Uh, first of all, dollar yen and yen pairs. I'm a small uh, overview of the yen pairs, which, um, as I was saying in the uh, in the chat room this morning, it seems that Asia and the rest of the world are in different uh, on different agendas um, regards to uh, to the yen um, it's now been twice or three times that we come in um, in in the early morning and especially when I'm looking at stuff like euro yen or um, uh, or, or some other yen pairs we, we trade around the highs and then we we constantly fail and um, <clears throat> in Europe or uh, or the US, puts the uh, yen pairs back down. And uh, this morning, it has not been any different. So if you want to do like really the intraday, uh, we already a little bit of a resistance where we stopped uh, in the early morning hours here around the 130, 55, 60 on the dollar yen. Bit of a support here that has been holding so far in the morning, but I would not attach too much importance to it because the yen really still living uh, still living its own life. Um, again, as I said, it looks that we are on, on different agendas between uh, what's happening in Asia and uh, and in uh, and in uh, Europe. Um, you, we can see it on the euro yen as well, coming in on Monday uh, at the highs um, and coming in uh, then in in the evening. Again, we are going to test the highs. Yesterday, uh, again, this morning, very early days, uh, we we coming in around the highs on on the euro yen, and again we are we are failing. So um, we've got to keep an eye on uh, on on what's happening, not only uh, price wise, but also price action in different time zones. I think it's uh, interesting an interesting watch at times Asia. Uh, moves uh, getting undone, or um, Europe uh, having different ideas on uh, on the yen pair. So just to show this one, um, I tried it again uh, to 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 go for the break, but I quickly quickly gave up. I had a bit of dollar yen as well, so the one compensates for the other. But um, uh, really, I'm I'm just uh, watching the game for uh, for the time being because the yen is uh, starting to confuse me just a a little bit. Um, on the day, if uh, if Euro Yen would trade fall back below uh, 140, 85, 95, 
uh, there, there, there may be room uh, to go uh, a tad lower here as well. And, and really the same is happening on, uh, on the other yen pairs. The one interesting door uh, is, the, um, is the Aussie yen. Uh, thanks to the Aussie data, we finally managed to, to get back up there. But then uh, again, uh, uh, around the, uh, what is it? The 100 DMA, 200 DMA waiting up here in the Aussie yen, it failed. And now we are retesting the uh, this black line here around the 91.35. Um, under there is 93 quarters, 85. Um, so that's the zone here of support. If that fails, uh, it could trade lower again. But uh, looking at the Aussie, uh, it might just hold that one uh, today. And um, the rest of the NPS is really uh, no different. Um, quick look at what could happen on the Canadian dollar today. So um, I think the, the top side here, uh, we have to look at uh, 134, 15, 20 for a starters. If that uh, would break higher on a, on a dovish uh, Bank of Canada, we could be trading 50 um, to 100 points uh, higher, in my opinion. Um, there's a bit of a traffic zone here between uh, this 133 and a half and uh, 133 and a quarter, uh, which uh, we should respect uh, as the Bank of Canada comes out. Our uh, personal view is that Bank of Canada will go a quarter percent as, as the general view is. Um, and then it all depends on uh, how uh, hawkish or dovish uh, they, they would come out or if they announce a full stop or just a pause or uh, continuing the rate hikes, um, that's going to be uh, driving the Canadian dollar uh, this afternoon. So keep an eye out if we start to break below 133 and a quarter and, uh, and hold below, and then we could do uh, another big figure um, quite easily, I think, on the Canadian dollar. Also because of the uh, less liquidity in Canadian dollar than we have, for instance, in in euro dollar or uh, or um, other bigger pairs so that's the this one is this this euro cat that we have been watching a uh, few of us in in the room you can see this here uh, this this zone of 146 and a quarter to 146.40 it's really uh pretty important and also supported by the fact that the um the weekly 200 dma is still hanging around there as well at 146.30 so this is a big level here um, we have already been, been been trading short into it a couple of times. Um, I would be ready to, to give it a try again with perhaps a stop and reverse above it. Um, if uh, in turn we start to go below uh, the latest lows, um, and I've got a couple of levels here, um, this is probably a bit close for comfort, 145.15, but then this one may be more interesting. If it gets below 144, 80, 85, there may be some uh, some acceleration for at least 100 points or who knows uh, more, depending on uh, how hawkish uh, the Bank of Canada comes out. Um, that for the Canadian dollar. Yeah, and then I look at especially the Aussie Kiwi. So we've seen the Aussie Kiwi here. Um, these were prior lows and highs. Uh, we're in this traffic zone, but we are back above um, what I judge as a measure of strength or weakness. Uh, as we can see, when we when we went higher the first time in uh, in the Aussie Kiwi, we had a stop here around this 108.85. Stopped right in front there. We held for a, for a while when we came back to to retest it, and then. Uh, we we had the breakdown. Now we just flew through it, and I think if if we get a retest of that level, it's going to show up again. So um, on any setbacks down to this 108.85 as a kiwi, I might uh, be willing to uh, to give it a try again and uh, monitor an extra one around this 108 and a quarter zone um, to to try and perhaps catch a knife if uh, if this goes um, back down. Uh, what else? The rest really hasn't really moved an awful lot. Um, Euromex, I know people are watching it. We we are again showing signs of of, of capping. So um, carry trades may still be very much alive. I may I may give it a go again if we get a test up uh, above twenty fifties just for the see what's happening there. If we can start to 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 rebuild uh, some of it, the dollar mix has 
pretty solidly reverse this uh, this trend line on the, on the four hours and uh, um, lately we can't make it back up there. Um, I I'd, I'd may try again to to lob some out if we get closer to 80, 95, 90 in the figure um, for the time being. For as long as the market doesn't know what to do with the dollar, um, this may still be a, a, a decent play. And uh, just last time showing uh, what I'm looking at at, uh, at the euro dollar. So this is this uh, red line from uh, 2017. Again, trying, failing, trying, failing. This is the 50% of uh, when the, the, the Fed started to pivot. And if we take the, the high of this move before the uh, the big dump, uh, it's at 109.40. So 109 figure 40 to me is the magic zone. If that goes, um, there's there's more to come. Um, but as I was saying this morning in the room, it's it's a bit strange that uh, we keep on refusing the level. Now, the question that I have is that are the big uh, accounts just on the sideline and waiting for it uh, for for some signal to to push it through, or do they are they still hesitant on 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 what the Fed might do? But it feels like this one is is building up, the longer we hang around here, it's building up for one day we wake up and it's trading 110 or 107 off again. Um, this, I don't think we can stick around a very important level just for um, for that long. Um, I, I I feel something should be decided around around this level uh, relatively soon in, uh, in the Euro dollar. And uh, that may be the combination of uh, Fed ECB um, next week, well, likely it should uh, give us uh, some some sort of direction uh, next week. And uh, really for today, Ryan, I um, may give it back to you, my friend. Yeah, have you got anything on uh, Dollar Swiss? Um, Swiss? No. Yeah, I am not. Oh, was, uh, I, okay, I'll have a bet. Um, I'm, I'm actually... Um, I, I'm seeing Euro Swiss um, uh, hanging around this 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 parity zone, um, but I, I no, I don't see dollar Swiss, and, and especially not if you're talking about divergences and stuff, because I'm not, uh, as you can see from my, my charts, I'm not looking at RSI's and stuff like that, because I think okay, I'll, have a, I'll have a quick look. Uh, the market in a will remain uh, irrational. On area size or whatever, much longer than we can defend the position. So uh, yeah. no, I'm not looking at dollar Swiss. Cool. All right, I shall grab it back because there's something I want to highlight uh, that we've been talking a lot about in our chat room. Uh, we do that, um, and this is uh, Aussie dollar, and I snapped this yesterday because we are, have been seeing very strong fix action into the London fix at uh, 4 p.m. GMT. Um, this is three days on the trot from Friday, big reactions coming in roughly from about half past three in the afternoon, um, running all the way into and over the fix. Um, so it looks like there's something going through there at these fixed points. Um, there has been talk that there's been stuff going through uh, Euro Aussie at this time as well um, for the last week or so. So we're not entirely sure what it is, where it's actually being done, but we have been seeing a big reaction um into these fixes and the market particularly yesterday is taking notice now what does that mean moving forward does it mean we get to four o'clock and the same is gonna things gonna happen um it might do but what the risk is is that the market is now seeing this it's seen three days of this happening and it's going to front run that today um now this stuff could be m a flows it could be dividend payments uh being done that the, the, and, and the amounts or the large amount has to be done in pieces at the fixes. We don't know what it is, but the market might front run this today. Um, and if it doesn't get the follow through from the actual Aussie buying, it's maybe going to get out of town pretty quickly. So watch this fix um, closely today from, I say, from about half past three GMT. Um, if you start to see the price running up significantly, um, you know, taking a leg up, um, I wouldn't look to chase that, but if you're sitting in an Aussie dollar position into the fix uh, and it gives you a bit of a free lunch, then look at maybe that move uh, to take some money off the table. Um, but if there is more flows to be done, then we may see the same thing again. Um, but the more the market picks up on it, the more it looks to front run it, 
the greater reaction the other way is if the market has gone too far in front running it. Um, do you have any idea what this uh, might be going through in this Aussie K or oh, even still? Yeah. Yeah, no, probably just uh, money managers uh, trying to... Um uh to 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 buy aussie and some some using those uh those fixings no I, I i haven't got a clue i haven't heard anything either from uh um from the market uh specifically what's happening uh over there um and it and i wouldn't think it's an m a either because they they would probably uh, yeah, could could be an M and A actually, but um, I haven't seen anything on the merger and acquisition front uh, to to justify this kind of move over over fixings. Yeah, yeah I mean, but, um, uh, it, I, I think ahead. when we see something like that, which is very precise and uh, clearly, it's flows that have to be are set on the back of where the fixing is. Um, it has to be on the back of some kind of structured deal of some sort. I yeah. mean, obviously, I, I can't know what it is, but it is, it's not just some random. Actually, after a while, like you said, Ryan, people catch on and they might play it. So basically exaggerate this move. But I think this one that we've seen so far is, is has to be on the back of some kind of structured deal, uh, a big one, obviously, um, that has to be executed on that, uh, on that, that level. So... Yeah. But obviously, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, no, we'll, we'll keep part if, of it. If, well. if, if I knew, I'd be on the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and telling us after. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, we have been noting this in the chat room and, and some of us have been trading it. That's why I was taking shorts in Aussie dollar um, just on those fixes. And uh, it sort of worked yesterday uh, from the, the first fix and it didn't work so much uh, after I did back in yesterday evening, because um, it has been maintaining these gains. And then obviously the CPI took me out uh, entirely of that. Um, but yeah, keep an eye on that uh, coming into the fix later on, particularly if you're trading the Aussie. Um, you know, if you're short into that time, you might want to think about uh, checking your trade and making sure you're protected on that. Um, and speaking of the chat room, this is where you will find out if that sort of thing's happening, because we're very quick to point out any outsized market moves going on in there in our various chat rooms. Um, we are running a big steep discount on that at the moment, which you can take advantage of if you want to come in. Um, you can also, uh, is the trial still running through this period still? Or, uh, uh, no, not... when we have the deep discounts, there's no trial. So the trial is going to come back uh, when this discount period is over, which is going to be just a few more days. Yeah. OK, so uh, but if you want to take advantage of that uh, steep discount in there, then do click on the link there and let's put that in the chat room for you as we speak. There we go. And also don't forget that we are running our traders funding program. Um, so if you want to check that out, a uh, lot of people in our chat room are on that. Uh, we've actually got a dedicated room um, in our chat room, if you have any questions uh, on that, I want to discuss with your fellow traders. Um, some of our boys and girls, yet Brand's still in it, and hopefully he's going to pass his assessment soon. Nudge, nudge, get a move on, mate. But uh, come on, don't put any pressure. Up. Come on. No, no, I was, I'm joking. He knows. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, that's one of the good things with the program is that there is no time limit. There is no pressure. Um, yeah. There is no one saying you need to pass this in 30 days or we'll boot you out and you have to pay again. Um, we know what it's like to trade. We know the pressures um, that traders are under because we're all traders ourselves. So this program has been designed with that in mind, um, that there is no pressure. If it takes you six months to pass the assessment, so be it. Um, you know. Yeah, the, the only constraint is that you have to make at least one trade every 30 days just to keep the account active, which is really... Yeah. Not a big deal. It can be a tiny trade. Doesn't matter what kind of trade. Just has to be one. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's pretty much uh, the same for a lot of brokers. If you don't do anything, uh, they get it. Uh, yeah, get a bit twitchy about it putting can, you stop trading it, altogether. So it can be a big trade or a Ryan size trade. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it just has to be a trade. <laughs> yeah. Oh, keep it small. Keep it small. Um, so anyway, that's uh, the links in there for you both. If you want to. Check those out, please do so. Um, right, quick look at dollar Swissy. Um, 
a bit like okay, not one. I, I keep an eye on it, but I don't. I'm not a big trader in it um, unless there's something juicy. Um, on the the longer term charts, it is looks like it's playing nicely with the levels. We got a bit of a level down into that 9080. Um, top side, we run into trouble up in the uh, parity to the 101s. Um, so for me, you'd, you'd play the range in this one. Um, I think it was Michael who was asking about that. Let me go back to his question. Uh, where was it? Uh, how do you see the price action? I know, sorry. How do you see the price action in uh, dollar Swiss diverging for ages on the hourly? Uh, you're looking at the 93 yearly level. Let's have a quick look at the hourly then. Okay, so since we've had this bounce off the lows, it's come up quite nicely. I think this is uh, another case of the trend is your friend, my friend, he says. Um, you know, we're stepping up higher lows. We are getting higher highs, although this one is is come up a bit short um, into that 93 area, as you suggest, mate. So if you do get a move up here, going to be interesting to see if it holds. Uh, if it holds again, then, you know, it's looking a bit like the Aussie in its early days when it came off the lows. Um, so maybe you could sort of use that as a bit of a blueprint in the Aussie dollar. If you, as long as you're seeing the lows coming in and we're not breaking back below them, you go with a trend. So you got two, you got a decision to make up the 93s. If you're long, you maybe take some off. Um, maybe think of uh, a little short, or if you want to stay long, take some off and look to trade a break above. If you get a breakthrough, initially the 80s and the 93s, uh, you may be off to the races up uh, towards the this next area up here. Um, so it's an open book as far as I can see. Um, I hope that's given you my small insight into it anyway. Um, right. All that's left is to thank you very much for coming to the uh, Flow Show. RA, that's some good info there. Um, you put up about the uh, mines in Australia. Could be something going on. Um, if you're trading the BOC, Keep an eye on what the message is more so than the rate reaction, unless it's outside of expectations. Um, that's going to be the driver there. Um, Kay, Stell, thank you as always for your valued input. Um, thank you, Ryan. Today, mate, I'm, I'm not going to hold it against you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you back eventually. Um, cheers, Kay, and thanks to everyone. We shall see you all tomorrow. Ta da. Bye bye. Hi traders, I'm Ryan Littlestone of Forex Analytics and Forex Flow Live, and I'm here to introduce you to the Flow Show. Every day in the UK European morning session, we run the Flow Show, bringing you all the latest market news, data moves and events. We make sure that you're informed about what's happening and what's to come that week and each day. What makes us different is that we bring clarity to the fundamentals. We tell you what a central bank comment or piece of data might mean for the price moves and trends you see every day. By nature, I'm a fundamental trader, so I need to know this information myself, and it's what I look at every day to shape my trading decisions. And now I want to share that with you to make it easier for you to understand them and help you learn how they can affect markets. It's not just about me listing out numbers and headlines. We analyze whether there are trends that will change or develop from certain data points, or whether a central banker said something that might change the path of monetary policy and thus prices. We don't stop at the fundamentals, though. The fundamentals are just the start of my trading strategies. They create the idea for trades, but then I have to look at the charts to find the levels I'm willing to trade those ideas at. And so that's a big part of the show also. We delve into the charts to look at the tech and how they may help us either plan new trades or to manage current trades. We like to vary from the script too, and sometimes we will have a show that's purely focused on something like trading psychology. Or we may have some special guests on. You just never know who or what might pop up on the show. But that's not all. This show may have my name tag on it, but it's really not about me. It's about you. And so I want to get your input, hear your views, get your questions about all aspects of trading. If you have questions about the fundamentals, the technicals, about learning to trade better, or you simply have a question on what a particular pair asset might do, feel free to come and join the rest of the Flow Show community in asking these questions live in our chat function. So if you're just a technical trader, we've got you covered. If you're a fundamental trader, we have you covered too. If you want to learn how to improve as a trader, 
Well, we have that covered also. Our show brings you the information in a way that's easy for all to understand and act on. So I look forward to seeing you each and every morning on The Flow Show. Trade well and be lucky. Uh